In this session, we'll explore a new Civil 3D 2018 improvement that can help simplify the creation and editing of corridor models. Let's take a look. On my screen, I have some geometry that represents the beginnings of a simple corridor model. Now, I'm keeping the geometry simple in this case to try and control the length of this video. That being said, the techniques we see here can be used on corridor models of any size. Just for a second, let's review some of the items that we have. Right here, I've got my existing ground surface called EG. Over here, I have my proposed road center line alignment called Brickville Road. This alignment was used to create some offset alignments that define the left and right edges of pavement. Each of these offset alignments also has an associated profile with a negative 2% cross slope. Let me zoom out. We'll pan down to the bottom and we'll look at the assemblies that I've created. Right here, I've got an assembly called Two Lanes that defines my pavement area. Over here, I have an assembly that represents the curb and gutter all the way out to the daylight for the right side of the roadway. And then over here, I have an assembly that represents the curb and gutter all the way out to the daylight for the left side of the roadway. Let's zoom out and we'll go back to our model. Now, historically, if I was creating a corridor model for this area, I might have a full road section for Brickville that I would then sweep along the entire length of the alignment. I might come back and create a region in this area using a less than full road section to accommodate for the intersection. Now, using Civil 3D 2018, things are much easier. That's because in 2018, we can extract dynamic feature lines from a corridor model and then leverage them as baselines within the same corridor. This allows us to use a more modular approach when it comes to corridor modeling. As you can see, I've already modeled part of the roadway. I have a corridor that was created using my two-lane assembly. Now that I've selected this, I'm going to bring it to the front. I'll do that by right-clicking. We'll go to Display Order, and I'll choose Bring to Front. At this point, I would like to model the curb and gutter to the daylight here on the left side. I'm going to start by extracting a feature line that represents the left edge of pavement. I'll do that by selecting the corridor, and then from the launch pad, I'll choose Feature Lines from Corridor. I'll select the left edge of pavement feature line, and I'll press Enter. As a courtesy, Civil 3D allows me to grab all of the feature lines that fell under my pick box. I'm going to use the Clear button to clean those out. I only want the edge of Traveled Way. If I click the Settings button, we can see that this is going to be a dynamic feature line, meaning that if this corridor changes, the feature line will update as well. Let me click OK. I'll choose Extract, and then I'll press Escape. If I hover, we can see that new feature line. Now, let's turn around and add this feature line as a baseline to my corridor. I'll do that by going to the Modify tab. I'd like to modify a corridor. I'd like to add a baseline. We'll add a feature line as baseline. Now, which feature line? I'll click this green block. This allows me to select the feature line on screen. I'll choose that feature line. And since I'm using that feature line as a baseline, I will give it a name. We'll call this Brickville Road EOP Left. I will then click OK and OK. Now that I've added the baseline, we'll add a region in the Modify Region panel. I'll click the Add Corridor Regions button. I will then click to select my baseline. I'll come down and click the Fill option because I'd like to sweep my assembly the entire length of the alignment. We'll be using the Curb and Gutter Walk Daylight Left assembly, and I'll click OK. Since this assembly uses a daylight target, I'm going to select that now. I'll choose the existing ground surface. I'll click OK and OK. If I back up, you can see that we now have the left side of the roadway modeled. I'm going to press Escape to get out of the previous command. Let's pan this down to the end. One of the things that I like about using this modular approach is that I now have independent control over some of the components in this corridor model. For example, if I select the corridor, you can see that I have a grip at the end of each baseline. I'm going to select this outside grip. I'll pull this down. You can see that I can use this to control the location of my curb and gutter to the daylight. Let me grab the grip. I'll pull this back to the starting point. I'll press Escape. We can use this technique to now create an opening for the intersection. Still on the Modify tab, I'll choose that I want to modify a corridor. I would like to split a region. Let's split the region that we just created. I'm going to split this at the end of the curb return, and I'll press Escape. I will then select the corridor, and I'll choose this second grip. I'll pull this down to the end of the other curb return. When I'm finished, I'll press Escape. I'll zoom out and we'll center this on screen. As you can see, very easy to create that opening. Using the multiple baseline approach, we may be able to get away with having fewer assemblies. Now let's take this technique to its logical conclusion. I'm going to jump over to another drawing. Over here, I have completed this model using multiple baselines. If I select the corridor, we can see the number of grips that we have. 
Let me press Escape. Historically, if I was to create a corridor model like this using a manual approach, it would be challenging to make changes. Now it's much easier. As an example, I'm going to select my Perryville Road alignment. I'll grab this grip at the end, and I'll pull it over to the center of this circle. And you can see that my offset alignments and their profiles have controlled the edge of pavement. My connected alignments and their profiles have controlled the curb returns. Now it's just a matter of doing a little grip editing. I'm going to start down here on the end. I'll select my corridor and I'll click this grip in the middle. We'll pull this out to the end. That extends those feature lines. I can now use these grips to pull out my curb and gutter and daylights. Let's zoom out and then we'll zoom in on the northeast return. I'll select this grip and we'll pull this back to the end of the curb return. I can then grab the curb return itself and we'll pull it out to the same location. We'll do the same thing for the other side. In this case, I'm going to grab the lane and I'll pull that back to the end of the curb return. And then I'll pull the curb return over to meet it. We've got one more. I'm going to pull this curb return back to meet the end of the geometry. And then to close up this gap, I'm going to grab the grip on the lane. I do that because by extending the lane, I'm extending that feature line, which then allows the curb and gutter, sidewalk, and daylight to extend. Let me pull this lane over to meet that same location. And it looks like I've got a little tiny gap there. Let me pull this over. When I'm finished, I'll press Escape. We'll zoom out, and we'll center the model on screen. So, using Civil 3D 2018, we now have more choices when it comes to modeling corridors. If you get a chance, try experimenting with extracted feature lines as baselines. You just might find that using a modular approach is one of the fastest ways to create and edit corridor models. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.